nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? Happy Saturday. Hi, Magic Guys. Welcome. Hi, Delwyn. Delwyn, I didn't know you were a nurse. That's really awesome. So is my mom. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Monta. Welcome from Lowell, Massachusetts. I'm in California. Hey, Donna. Hey, Amy, Monica. Hey, Barbara. Again. <laughs> Curious how to see it. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that and a couple of other little concerns. But I mean, it looks so good on camera, doesn't it? This color, this color works pretty good on camera. I think that's why I picked it recently for those, those fabrics, you know? Yeah, that's great. I know, sometimes lives are really hard to make it. I'm really consistent with my schedule, um, which helps but it is every other week now because I also do a ton of stuff in the guild. So I think that kind of makes it tricky, you know? All right, so we do have a lot of steps today. I spent my sweet time on some of that stuff we did the other day. So, hey, Malin, hey, Terry. I love how the mods both enter at the same moment. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and if you'll notice here, here, let me hide my finger. Um, Wardrobe by me gave us a discount code, 10% off, and it won't expire. I'm not sure if it's just for this or if it's for other things, but just so you know, use that one. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Julie. Hey, Sanmi. How, how's it going? Okay, so if you're not in the guild or you haven't been there for a few for a while. Yesterday I posted some fit concerns I had about this jacket. I won't go into a ton of detail here. You can just go and check out the post because I put a bunch of pictures. Um, it, it fits great across my back. It's pretty like, loose, like, not loose, but it's got that nice little like billowy bomber jacket look. The front is a little bit snug. Um, and I sized up um, because of the quilted fabric. Um, the other interesting thing was that it sat above me, like it's, it sat up with the shoulder sticking straight out. So, and the armhole was really high. So what I did was I angled the shoulder a little bit more. So it was like right here. And then I dropped the armhole the same amount. So that way I am not changing the circumference of the armhole and I don't have to change the sleeve. Uh, the other thing I did was I scooped away at the back neck here to about right here. So I went from zero, dropped it three eighths of an inch here. That's a very typical thing I need. So that was very nice of her. Yeah, someone asked in a comment and I was like, I'll just ask. <clears throat> um, I really noodled on like, could I make this bigger? So 
Here's what I think. I think that if you are making this, you should measure yourself with all of your clothes on. Don't use your um, next to skin measurements. Use your measurements um, as if you were gonna put this jacket on over it. I just assumed that kind of ease was built in and I shouldn't have assumed. Oh, thanks, Barbara. I know, I actually, I never wear this sweater. I found it in my sweater thing. It's, a, it's kind of a really fun sweater I have to show you guys. It's one of my oldest sweaters. I did not make this sweater. It has these two ties. Oop. I was a lot smaller when I got it. <laughs> um, I feel like too, when I used to wear this when I first got it, people were like, that thing's ugly. And I didn't care. I loved it. Just one of those things. You just like what you like sometimes. So let's see. This is, the, the, so <clears throat> I, I think like I could, I also think that what I would have, I would probably do knowing what I know now is I would probably cut the fronts of maybe two sizes bigger, everything else the same, and then I would keep the height of them, the, the size of everything else. So basically giving it the circumference of two sizes bigger, um, but the height of the current size. And if you're in um, like Journeyist or Master Group and you're gonna come to one of the SBSs, this month is all about grading. And that is exactly the kind of thing I'm gonna show in there. Like, you know, what if you do just want the circumference of something, but you don't want it to get longer or the armhole deeper or the neckline wider, um, you can just maintain the circumference of a different size, you know? so. Just so you guys know, I will cover that eventually. So that, that would be my tips. I think that measure yourself over your clothes. Um, if you're using quilted fabric, size up anyway, because that's going to take up a size. Thanks, Terry. <clears throat> um, and she gave me that tip. The owner gave me that tip. Like, oh, you're using quilted, you should size up was a good tip. <laughs> what else would I say? You could make a muslin if you want. I mean, I, I don't think you need to measure the pattern pieces. I don't think they're inaccurate. I just think that you need to account for your clothing. Hey, Jim, underneath. That's all. So the last thing I did, because I've held up the sleeve to me today, and I was like, okay, this sleeve because I was like, okay, do I have to ease this in? I'm a little nervous about easing in a sleeve out of quilted fabric. The, the fabric wants to tuck constantly. Like it's just, cause you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's slack, right? And when you're sewing over it, it just wants to like pleat and make a little tuck, right? So um, I think my lining would have been a great sleeve lining, but the sleeve I think is gonna fit me a little close. So I swapped it out today for a lining, a traditional lining fabric. It's not gonna like coordinate the best with my lining fabric. It's like a pale pink, but it's slippery and very thin and that'll give me a little bit more room. Um, no, I don't know, why would I, uh, why are you thinking using it FBA? It's not necessarily just my bust. It's like the whole front. You know? A, a, a full bust adjustment is basically giving you more width. Right? You could, I guess, then, I guess, do a full bust adjustment, adjustment if you want. The, the dart's not very big, so, all right. Oh, lastly, my welts are a little too close to the center front, and you know why that is? It's because they were designed for the Kelly Anorak, and the Kelly Anorak has a really wide center front. It does this, it goes like that. It's like that far apart. So, whoops. <laughs> it felt, I was like, it's a little far from the side seam, but I really hate going like this, like, you know? <clears throat> but with and length over the bus. Yeah, I don't I, that that could be great. You could totally do that if you want. For me, it feels 
like the whole front is just a little too narrow. I just want to add to the center front. That's where I want it. The dart looks good. Panels along the front. Yeah, I mean, I really noodled on this. I was like, all right, I could, I could add a little like section here. We still have our zipper, right? But the thing is, we have a 5 8 inch turn back here. I'm gonna lose so much at the center front right now. Um, our zipper's gonna be exposed. It's gonna be like that. I, I really thought about this. I scoured everything in my, um, well, that's because you're a guy. <laughs> I mean, you know. That's the benefit of sewing for yourself, right? Is that you can add shaping when you need it. Yeah, like an extended placket. I, I thought about this, I thought about it a lot. Honestly, I, I really could have um, just taken off the fronts and re-sewed the pockets on there. And I just, I just don't wanna spend that much time on it, um, just to be really transparent, mainly because I don't like, I need to do things that pay the bills. So I just didn't want to be like, all right, I can still wear this. I'll be able to zip it up. I'll probably wear it unzipped. Yeah, they're totally normal. I mean, maybe not always if you want a straight fit. It helps. It doesn't matter if the coat is loose. Dart shaping is nice. It's nice for men too. They just don't use it because there's a stigma. Yeah, it's very common. Any kind of shaping is shaping, right? It doesn't matter what it's for. Anything you want the shaping for makes it more comfortable. So, yeah. <clears throat> Would you do darts in a leather bomber jacket? No. <laughs> I wouldn't. Maybe, maybe you could, but I would go about it differently. So they look funny right there, but they don't look funny like when I'm wearing them, wearing it or anything. So, hey Sydney, how's it going? Okay, so let's see. So just to recap what I have done since we last met, uh, I made the fit changes, but I also, I crazily, I had my facing on flipped. I had it flipped, so I'm not sure how I went about what I talked about. No, but it has a gathered bottom and it's cropped. It's very full jacket. You wouldn't put darts in that. It also has a cut on sleeve. All right, let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Okay, so, oh yeah, yeah, my, I'm not sure where, what, how I explained to put this on, but make sure your facing is like this. Like when you put it, when you fold it up, right? You're getting it and it's, you fold it up, right? And then the right side shows to the in, inside, right? Like that. Okay, so the only thing, um, if you're not dealing with any fit issues or anything, uh, the only thing that I would suggest if you're doing the quilted, I see a little thread there. I ended up stitching it down the center front a few times just to flatten it and make it, it's fine. <laughs> um, you don't have to apologize, it's fine. Uh, I just keep losing track because it's always the beginning of the stream. I'm always like a little bit like, whoa, whoa, you know? So I wanted to flatten this. So that's why you're gonna see a lot of rows of stitches on mine right there. Um, and you can also see, I just saw it looking at the camera, see what you can see. You see how there's this faint line right here where my thumbnail is, right there? I marked that 5 8 inch line. Remember the very, one of the very, very first steps in constructing this was to iron that back on the facing and on the jacket. And I didn't because of the quilting. So if you did, then you don't, you won't care about this, but I used my um, hair marker, this majiggy. And I just, you know, drew it on there. So we have a guide that I can see. You might not be able to see it very well, but I have it. And so now we're gonna attach our zipper. So we're gonna jump right into this. I need my collar. Oh shoot, I just dropped a sleeve. And I need the zipper. Look at the zipper, looks so good. 
Oh, it looks much better in person. On the camera screen, this looks so drab. This looks almost grayish. But here, it's like almost the same color. I'm really proud of how well it matches. All right, so we're gonna fold our collar wrong sides together, right? And we're going to just sew the center front neck right here at the top and the center front on both sides with our zipper. So I think I'm gonna start on the right front here. The facing is gonna be kind of a, a pain right now. It's gonna be kind of in your way and stuff, but we are going to sew it in a second and it'll be a little easier to deal with, all right? Uh, it's probably inch and a quarter. It's not enough, you know, because the seam allowance is kind of wide on the center front. I'm not gonna use the full seam allowance, just to be honest, because I need as much as I can. All right, so we're gonna fold the collar wrong sides together. All right, if you have a wrong side. Mine has a, oh shoot, what is up with this camera? It's the cord, it's the, um, Hi Aisha, how's it going? The camera's fine, but the cord, there's something about it. Oh, well, that didn't work. Let's see. Sorry. Yeah, it's not, I don't know if it's like not liking the cord or, but it's the one that plugs in isn't that, is like there's something up with it. And I can't replace the cord on the camera. I have to buy the whole camera again. All right, there we go. Now, now I just gotta do all my settings again. <laughs> like that. I think I like the lighting right now. Oh, but I didn't. You know, I got a message and someone was like, I'm not trying to complain, I just want you to know. They say that every time I brighten it up, it's really, really bright. You know what I mean? Is Are you guys not telling me that um, the brightness is too bright when I brighten it? <laughs> you guys, tell me if it is, because for me, it might look different. All right, here we go. We're back at our camera here, or our, our collar here. So we're gonna fold it wrong sides together. And this little folded edge right here, we're gonna put that against this, this 5 8 inch fold line. Right, so I, you can't see it. Lighting's perfect, okay, cool. Right now, I think it looks really good. I didn't brighten it either though. Uh, this little pin is marking the clip two point. I'm gonna get rid of it, I know where it's at. All right, so we're gonna line up the cut edge right here to the squared off part of the neckline. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, Amy. I honestly, this is, maybe it's just I'm being naive, but I honestly think like a lot of you are here to be polite. <laughs> And you really just have it on in the background and you're totally, you know, you're washing your dog or making dinner or, or you're, you're sewing and you have it muted. <laughs> and so you wouldn't tell me, or you're having a conversation with someone in chat. <laughs> All right, so line up this fold to that 5 8 inch fold line. I'm gonna put mine a little bit closer. And then line up this raw edge here to the squared off neckline. All right. Like that. It's only your hand that you don't like, right? I know, I really think I should cover up that one. All right, so let's not get our zipper confused either. So right, this is right sides up and it's gonna go right side down. And I'm going to just line up my, do I want it that far down? I'm gonna slide this up so that this right here, the zipper stop, is about a half inch away from the top there. Oh, you're Curtis! 
I, you don't have to change it. If you tell me that, I'll remember. I mean, eventually I'll remember. Curtis is new to the guild. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> okay. And you want the zipper on top of the collar, by the way. Top of the collar. I am a little nervous about this. I'm not going to hide it. I think I will put that fold to the 5 eighths line. Let's not, let's not change something here. All right, so we have the fold to the 5 eighths inch mark. I have the zipper lined up to the raw edge. Let me look at the directions really quick, make sure it said zipper to the raw edge. Just make sure. And the page on the instructions I'm on is, looks like 12. Oh, the teeth against the front edge crease. So you would slide the, the teeth here to that front edge crease, which for me means I'd slide it over a little tiny bit to the right like that because my zipper's pretty big. I just poked myself out. Uh, zipper on top of the collar, just in case yours is closer together. And then where is our facing? Here we go. We're gonna fold the facing up here on top. And I, I think we're just gonna sew this side first. The zipper is so heavy, the jacket's bulky. There's so much going on. So when it's kind of like this and it's kind of crazy, they are a really great group. They really are. I've never had drama with this group. It's, they're amazing. It's my I mean I'm not even like joking it's my favorite place it feels like the safest place of any social media thing I do it's awesome it's crazy I'm so thankful <laughs> okay so when you have all this stuff like you're like this is nuts I hate this I hate all this mess I hate this um, feeling kind of crazy. There's a few things I'll do sometimes to calm it down or I just try and tune it out. Um, and I just try and focus on what I'm focusing on. But if you want to do things like, uh, clip your facing to a part of the jacket, just to hold it out of, of, of the way, things like that are great. So <laughs> you guys, well, what can we do to motivate? I'm going to, I think I'm going to, um, no, nah, I'll just pin it. It's fine. Let's see where this is landing here. I'm going to look at where my, um, zipper bottom here is landing before we, this is actually really important to do. I can't believe I almost didn't check this. Uh, fold your facing up and match the seam there. I'm going to try and dent that and then I'm going to dent it with my trusty here a marker here like this we want this to end here this is more important than lining it up at the neck it's like seriously more important <laughs> you know <laughs> you can't shorten your zipper from the bottom okay <laughs> So now let's let's walk it up here and see. I think I'm fine. Look at that. It's looking pretty good. All right. Zipper tape is really weird. You can kind of it's kind of uh you can kind of scrunch it together sometimes, but it 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 really is pretty unforgiving um on the whole. But sometimes you can kind of like scrunch the tape together past the selvage edge of it on the inside of it. So I'm just trying to see, can I get this to work? I think I can get this to work, no problem. All right, so we're just gonna sew. <laughs> hey, Walter, how's it going? Ooh, I'm really liking mine, Aisha. I'm going to make a short sleeve one. Maybe I'll do that for um, my Zoom today. I'm a little worried about uh, poking my fingertip with the pin because I heard it. Do I want a zipper foot? 
I don't think so. You might want a zipper foot. All right, so we're gonna start, and we don't really want to sew this little raw edge here, so I'm just gonna focus on this little edge right here. So where the jacket turns the corner, I'm gonna sew up to like right here. Because at that pin, or the, there was the dot, and that's a pivot point. And we're going to clip into that and then turn our collar and go around the neckline. So we're just going to work on just this little part here and go down straight down the center front. So let's just get it going. Because it feels so crazy right now. So let me get this all nice and flat. Pull the collar over. I should zoom it in, but I'm just gonna pull the camera down. It's just faster and easier. I know it's in my face way. Ice cream. Hey, Libby. Oh, me too, right? I'm a little nervous, if you can't tell. Just because uh, there's kind of a lot going on. The quilting is definitely adding a layer. I don't want to hit the zipper head, so I'm just kind of watching it. Move that pin, and we're gonna move this pin. We don't want anything hanging things up. All right, so now we're gonna just hold this whole thing. I have some non-negotiable spots here, so I just want to make sure that I know exactly where they are. So far, so good. Doing taxes? Oof. What's your ice cream flavor? Just pulling the zipper up past this. Like, what's your go-to ice cream flavor? I have to know this. <laughs> Could you pick one ice cream flavor to eat for the rest of your life? go. Strawberry cheesecake. Ooh, that's that's a good one. I, I like ice creams with cheesecake in it as, as long as there's not too much cinnamon in the crust. Because I feel like they they mask, they try and make it taste like crumble crust with the cinnamon. Black walnut ice cream. Really? Okay. Butter brickle. Okay. Now is butter brickle like butter pecan? Vanilla is always a winner, right? Okay, anything that has nuts in it. Oh, see for me, Donna, same, it's a texture thing. Oh, Margaret Islander. Is that the Islander sewing systems person? I actually don't know, sorry. Hi, Rachel. You're all talking from the past, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. Uh, add nuts. Okay, so lately, this is what I've been doing. Okay, maple, walnut, or vanilla, okay. The maple would be good. You, not a single mint chip? What's wrong with you people? Hmm. All right, let's check it out. I, I just wanna check it out before I clip anything, how it's looking. Looking pretty darn good. I mean, bam, we kind of have a jacket, except you can see my stay stitch line. That's not good. <laughs> I can take that out, I guess, because I don't really want to lose any width. That looks so good. Made that look easy, huh? Mint chip, yeah, mint chip, it's so refreshing. Okay, uh, let's clip, let's trim this. 
So yeah, my, lately my thing is that I'm really into um, rice hill, no. Rice, what's rice hill? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna clip our corner here. Which one's my seam line? Right there, okay. <laughs> well, that was close. Let's do the other side. Oh, it is the Islander sewing system. You know, I'm pretty sure Libby's been doing some patterns from there lately. Right, Libby? Is that where you got the um, sloper? Was that you, Libby? Someone's been utilizing their stuff. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna have to pull this. I'm gonna clip this little corner down here. A little fuzz, man. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna make this probably look hecka awkward. God, mint chip is like, I have to have that always. Soft serve frozen custard, that's so specific. So my husband got us burgers the other day and there's like a little um, burger truck across the street and I'm off Mondays, right? So I was, we were at home. And so he went then <clears throat> and he went, like I didn't go. He just went him and, and got him to go. And for some, something, ha oh, someone before him, I guess apparently they do soft serve in the, the little truck. And this looks kind of bright. Um, and the person had asked for swirl, but they had accidentally done, I think, vanilla. And they asked my husband, and they're like, oh, hey, do you, do you want this? I'm like, what? He, he's like not the right person to give this to. I, I felt very affronted that I missed out on a soft serve cone of ice cream, you know? And then he gets home and he's kind of like full. <laughs> right? <laughs> like a burger and fries. But now I know that they have soft serve across the street. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It is you. Ordinarily Alex. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes. How's it going? <laughs> now I can call you Alex because Brinja, I was, wasn't sure if I was saying that right. Dumpy looking place has all the Umqua ice cream. Oh, I do buy Umqua sometimes. Herbing Janet Prey, Margaret Islander's niece now owns the company. Okay, okay. It's really unusual. Friend Minship is. Oh, yeah, French Navy. They did a, a free pattern for Peppermint, Pe Peppermint Magazine. Hasn't the mint chipper? <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm being terrible here at, at uh, giving you kind of like a idea. So, uh, you probably saw that I just folded up that band at the bottom again because that's really important where your zipper ends. With a separating zipper, you can't shorten it at the bottom. There's just nothing you can do about that. You have to start matching it up from the bottom up. So if you have a zipper that's a little too long, you're definitely going to want to do that, right? Okay, so then we're going to put the top of the zipper about three-eighths of an inch down, teeth to that little fold, the crease line on there, right? Where's the collar? This is so fiddly, but it's all gonna be fine soon and not so fiddly. So make sure you don't twist your collar, right? So I've got it here, right? I'm just gonna kind of follow it around like this. Don't get lost in the sauce there. Um, put that fold line up to that crease line again, line up the raw edge to the top there. Just be methodical about it. Don't get, don't like, let your emotions get in the way here. <laughs> Just power through because it's about to get a lot easier once we get this secured. <clears throat> oh yeah, peppermint um, stick is really good too. I think of that as more like a, a winter thing, you know, like you'll see it more around the holidays. I, I like soft serve, it's fine. 
Like it's it'll hit the spot. It's good, and it is. It is it really good. It's I'm also a huge fan of cones, plain cones, like the sweet cones. What are those called? Sweet. What is the sweet cone called? Um, oh my gosh, it just flew out of my head. Um, I like plain cones mostly, but like waffle cone and um, the sweeter kind, they're they're fine too. But I have to be in the mood for it. I sort of like savory and sweet together, so I think that's why I like the plain cone vibe. All right, so let's just kind of line up this zipper here. I don't have any stripes to worry about going across, and I probably could spend a little time making sure that my quilting looks pretty good. Yeah, waffle cones are sweet, but you know the, the um, a sugar cone, sugar cone, that's what it is. I'm not a big fan of sugar cones. Okay, this side feels a little tighter, so let's just kind of pull it a little bit. The quilting is definitely not my friend. Culver's frozen custard. Oh, is that what is that what Jan's talking about? That sounds so decadent. I when I think of custard, you can tell I'm in the West. I think of flan. Yeah, candy cane ice cream. Mm hmm exactly, with some chocolate chips in it. Oh yeah, blackberry, that's a classic Oregon flavor. I had a really, really good friend. She passed away, but um, so, but her fam her sister, she's a twin, her sister and her sister's husband started a ice cream shop in, um, I think it's in San Rafael in California. Um, but they use only in season like produce for the flavors and things like that. They might have like mint all the time, right? Mint's always in season, right? But like they'll have like fresh strawberry ice cream. And I, I'm not a big strawberry ice cream. It's, it's good, it's just not my go-to, but it's, theirs is mind blowing, it's so good. Well, then my friend, her and her husband at the time, they started a, uh, the same exact model ice cream shop where I lived. And oh, so good. It was the best ice cream I've ever had in my life. I, and, and when I go places, people are always like, oh, I got to take you to the ice cream shop here. You know, like that's the thing that they know I love. But I will say, like... Crazy flavors are fine with me and unique flavors are fine, but they are not satisfying for me. I think I've talked about this with you guys before because, you know, in Oregon they have salt and straw and they'll have like Guinness, Guinness beer ice cream with they and or, um, you know, strawberry balsamic vinegar, something or other, right? Fine. They taste fine. I don't drink beer, but, but it's just not as satisfying. And I think they're so underwhelmed by my reaction to it. I'm like, yeah, this is good, you know. <laughs> I just want mint chip. <laughs> and I love chocolate and peanut butter ice cream too. Chocolate and peanut butter is also a go-to, but I can't have that all the time. It's a little, a little too much. I'm not the biggest chocoholic either. Right now, I just hope that if there's mint chip at my store and there's not a lot of good brands, that they at least have like Briars. Because the chocolate in theirs is pretty good. Makes a difference. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to start from the bottom up this time. I, re I don't, oof, I don't really want to backstitch too much because I'm a little nervous that I got kind of a rocky start there. <clears throat> Push all this towards the hem. Okay. That's the other side. Let's try and get this. This I am definitely sick of this uh, this fluff that comes off of this fabric. <laughs> It grabs everything. I keep finding it. Iceberg salad, ice cream. Who said that? Sausage and ice. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they're hit and miss. It doesn't help that for a long time 
they would have like three flavors, right, Sydney? So you were pretty much out of luck if they were just all not your jam. You know, they'd have like peanut butter and jelly ice cream or something like that, you know, and it's like, the other really cool thing about Salt and Straw is it has a, an Indian restaurant next to it that is so good. Cause this is the one in like Portland, kind of near that like craftier area. I know that there's Salt and Straws like all over now. There's a few of them. Ow, okay, trying to keep it all. Ow, I keep poking myself. Cause I put, put my pins pointing down. All right, so let's get this um, zipper head out of the way and we'll pull the jacket apart a little bit too. Oh yeah, I had that too, Jan. It'd be like all melty. It's like the, the original soft serve. <laughs> No way, Libby, really? Is Baskin Robbins like a um, a national thing for everybody? Is that a national chain for all of you on the East Coast too? Or is that just a West Coast thing? Their chocolate and peanut butter is one of my favorites. I haven't been there in like pre-Panini. We always put it in 7-Up. Wait, wait, what? Sherbert. Oh, yeah, with Hawaiian punch. Oh, my God, that sounds so sweet. Oh, you do. You have Baskin Robbins. Okay. 7-Up. Okay, okay, yeah, I actually know what you're talking about. 7-Up and Sherbert. Yeah. I was picturing root beer float, but I know you're right. That is actually a good combo. Yeah, the problem with them now is that for some, for some, like, bad combo in businesses, Togo's, which is like a sandwich shop, bought them, or vice versa, I don't know. And now they are together in the same location a lot of times. I'm trying to ease my facing in here. <clears throat> and so for me, when I'm going out for ice cream and I walk in and it smells like sandwich shop, you know, pickles and pastrami and all that stuff, it is so off-putting for me. That I uh, sometimes just like have someone else order for me. <laughs> All right, we're at the top here. Where is the, okay, I'm just making sure where that, um, the top of the zipper is so I don't hit it. All right, we're gonna turn. I might have a little tuck there. Let's just kind of give this a little once over. Cheating, ooh, look, I have the fuzz in my zipper of this stuff. It's like in my house. Turkey with you. Hey, hey. Hi, DMAC. How are you? Hi, Violet. <laughs> you love Togo's. Oh my God. You don't want to smell Togo's. Yes. It's so, so sad. So one uh, interesting thing is like one of the Baskin Robbins near me, well, in, in Chico, not near me anymore. I'm just looking at the head of the top of the zipper here. Um, they closed down because I guess maybe they're just going to do the combo ones now. And so like there's two other locations in Chico, like they're doing fine. But okay, wait, let me just get this to the, we're just going to go up to the kind of the end of that little straight part there. All right, that's it. So they closed, but the most amazing thing happened. There is a Mexican popsicle shop that is in the area and they've been like at um they, they were operating out of a truck and then they had a brick and mortar at the like t college end of town and they um opened inside the old baskin robbins and they are so good they have a full ice cream thing too and their ice cream's really good but they have the most amazing popsicles like huge gigantic things they're like a meal almost they're they're amazing and they have a couple of, they have like three locations. So they're doing pretty good too. Frozen yogurt is okay. It's good when it's good. You like the green I'm wearing? That's awesome. I'm making a, you can't tell, but I'm making a green bomber jacket too. And I was kind of worried that my end right there would be a little sad, but I think that it's not worth fiddling with, you know? 
Are you love it something and talking about food, not a great deal. Oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying, I stop and give details. Okay, here we go. Let's check out how I did on this side before we trim the corner there. Like, is it gonna be okay? I think I'm gonna leave it. Looks good enough. Oh, tarot, yogurt. Is yogurt Lana, um, that chain? So I don't know why, there's a curse on frozen yogurt places here. They don't survive. It's not my favorite thing because it's all about the toppings. And I mean, it, they, don't, they don't have like a whole lot of like nuts sometimes. So sometimes you're kind of relegated using like peanut M&Ms on top to get the crunch factor that I need. <laughs> but yeah. I like, okay, I don't like that. Oh. Oh, 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 you know what I did wrong here? I, I guess I could leave it, but see how my zipper's doing this? It would have been smarter. I don't know why I do this every time because there's only like in one spot where you can do this. When you put your zipper tape, you don't want it to go straight up into the neckline. You want to yoink it over so that it goes to this seam here, right here. You don't really want it to go up into the neckline because it's not going to stay. See the zipper right now, like when it's in, in the sewing right here, the zipper's right here. It's going straight up into this neckline. Well, it's not gonna stay like that. It's gonna stick out from the jacket, right? So you gotta decide like, is that what I want this to look like? Like, it doesn't bug me too much. Yeah, that's a technical term. What are you talking about? Let's take it out and fix it though so that I can underscore what you really want that to do. We're just gonna take, I'm gonna try and not disrupt the uh, end point right here where the, the collar is. But we're also gonna have to take out some right here. This is always dicey. Never my favorite thing to take out this little spot here. But if you haven't started sewing, I wanna show you. And I, I trimmed my, um, I trimmed my, uh, Zipper tape, so that's not great either. See, so right here, you want to take this and pull the zipper tape. I missed a thread here. Let me just get it right here. Let's get this. I don't know if you're still here, Violet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're there, okay, yeah. You can put this in, oh, let's see, that sounds good. Oh yeah, Cold Stone, there's one of those here, I think. Um, I was looking for you the other day, Violet. I was kind of enjoying whatever that game was I was watching you play. My husband was enjoying it too. That was kind of funny. He walked in. I was eating lunch after my stream. <laughs> I was watching Violet play a video game <laughs> while uh, I ate. And then my husband walked in and brought me a coffee. All right. So yeah, see, I, I trimmed my tape so it's kind of dicey now. But you want to pull it over like this like 90 degrees like that. Get it out of the top neck seam. So let me see if I can secure this with my awl. Let's pull it over. And you just wanna pull the tape over, none, none of the metal bits. Since I trimmed it, it's very hard to, to secure. Make sure I don't have that um, zipper head. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about that zipper head. Oh, yeah. I don't know how it did down here, but we'll see. Let's get that tape out of there. Maybe I shouldn't have fixed it. Trimming zipper tape, each time I did it on this jacket just now, I was kind of like, oh, here we go. Once you trim it, it's all, that's it. So I secured it along this edge and then I went back to the neckline and, oh, now I'm a little off though. Little more crooked, let's see. Nervous, nervous. 
Okay, oh yeah, see, look, I have a little corner showing. Here's the thread that I forgot to remove. You guys got me thinking about ice cream. It's all Monica's fault. If she would have just started pinning her pattern, we wouldn't be thinking about ice cream right now. Okay, there's my zipper head right here. Okay, cool, thanks, Mac. His game is, is, like at first I was like, Oh, this kind of looks like fun. Maybe I'll do it. And then he's really good. And then it looked a little hard. And I was like, this is great. I can just watch him play. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. All right. Do I think that was worth doing? I mean, it does look a little nicer. Except for the threads I got in there. You see that? I don't have that buckling going on there now. Your, your, your ice cream was delicious. Okay. Yeah, Monica. Red mango. Yeah, see, every, um, you know, they, yeah, sorry, Kathleen, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's fix the other side. This is the one I just did, right? So let's look at this one here. So let's show you before. See how I have this little buckle there see that's about as far out as I could pull that and you see it's kind of buckling right so try and do that and so basically what I'm telling you to do is take the zipper tape here and pull it and make sure that it's pulled into this seam here this way not into this next seam that's my bad sorry about that Ice cream teacher is all for me. I went specifically to the store the other day just to get ice cream on my way home because my husband's been doing all the shopping lately and I finally was like, dang it, I'm feeling robbed of sneaking things into the cart. Even if I'm not sneaking, I'm just getting the things I want. He doesn't have the sweet tooth I have. He would totally get ice cream for me if I asked for it but I will forget, I don't know, I don't know he's going to the store. And so magically our cupboards are never going bare right now, right? Because he's going a lot, like he's out and about, he picks something up, he's out and about, he, he picks something up, right? And um, I finally was like, dude, I need some ice cream. And so I just went, that's all I bought was, and then I bought two tubs. Does anyone like Rocky Road from CVS? Oh, see now for us it's Rite, or Rite Aid because it used to be Thrifties and Thrifty had ice cream for 15 cents a cone when I was a kid. <laughs> your, I had to answer your, your flavor. Caramel Macchiato, decadent. CVS serves ice cream? Hey Margit, how's it going? A caramel and licorice ice cream today. That sounds so salt and straw. Licorice, huge licorice fan, and ice cream. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so I've pulled out the seam there. Look at this tiny little nub of zipper tape I have to deal with. Not good. Going from this direction is a lot better though. I'm gonna fold it over. It's also really stout. Be very, very delicate. What is this? Okay. This is the seam, not that. All right, let's get it going here. I'm going to take my all, yoink it over like this. I want the neckline right here. I want to be able to eventually sync up with the old seam right there, too. I'm thinking it's a scoop of each. My brain needs to know that that's a scoop of each. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Again, I'm just gonna start with that side there and now I'm gonna finish it. Yeah, thrifties, my friend and I, my friend Chris, who lives in Minnesota now, 
Um, but we um, lived in the same condominium complex when I was like eight, nine, ten years old. And her dad had been brought here to build the new fantasy land at Disneyland. So she's from Minnesota, my best friend. And we, and then she eventually, like they were probably in like um, company housing or something at first in the condo. And then she moved to like a house, you know, and they had a thrifties near their house. So we would scrounge the house for 15 cents each and go and walk to thrifties and get an ice cream cone. <laughs> And they have the really weird shaped ice cream cones. Yeah, it was thrifty, yeah. And Rite Aid bought thrifty. There we go, that looks better, see? Not bad, I, I did mess that up right there though. I saw that I did and I tried to correct it. Let's see if I can try and correct it without taking it out. I could just take it out, but I don't want to. It's just got a little pleat in the fabric. I'm going to try and force it out. Don't you hate it when you're like, I'm just going to force that to work, and then you just make such a bad mess to take out when you can't get it to work? Okay. All right. Uh, let me make sure I go in the same order. Was that, Catalina, were you the one that um, gave me the information about Monday in the comment section? I feel like your name was something else. Something happened with YouTube like a couple months ago with names. So some of you come up as user blah, 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 blah. And then I'll look at it in the other place. There's like, I have a YouTube content creator app and then the other YouTube app. And then I see your name. I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so. Yeah, it's a little warmer here, I think, too, Donna. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Next is the, okay, good. It is, it's just the collar. So good, we're gonna secure the rest of our facing here. Let's put my, sorry, I just whacked the my front. I'm gonna put my um, label on here right now. Just so that, that I don't have the, these pins to deal with. There's a lot of pins and a lot of jacket and a lot of tools. All right, turn. Do you hate it when you pin something the wrong direction? It took me uh, probably a year to break myself of this one habit of when I used pins a lot more, I would pin parallel to the seam. So that like, you know, if I was gonna be sewing along this edge here, my pins would all be pointing that way, right? And then I'd pull them out as I went. Still a super convenient way to do it, but it was starting to interrupt some of my sewing. Um, I think when my sewing just got more and more advanced, I wasn't taking them, like needing them as much, right? And so then what was happening was they would get, I just, I just would like, so it just would get caught in my feed dogs or it would be under a layer, you know? So. I ha it took me like a year to break myself of that habit. It was the one of the hardest sewing habits I had to break. It's finding the center of my back neck. And I have a chalk on my rib collar here. As opposed to uh, pinning perpendicular. Because then you can just sew right over it. I know a lot of people don't like doing that, but I do. All right, so finding the center of my facing here. this. 
Now you're gonna have to stretch your collar a little bit, but we're gonna also, we're gonna do this little um, clip right here. So I'm just gonna clip into the jacket and the facing, not, not the, um, not the collar. And I kind of want to see, did I sew up to that spot? I think we should sew all the way up to that spot. So I just being a little conservative. So we're just going to sew up to the dot that was given to us on the pattern. I think I can see it better on here. So basically I'm going to go to that little corner right here. Here's the corner dots about right here. My facing is, I'm so glad I unquilted it. <laughs> Would have been so much harder to do. Okay, so there's one right there. Should have done that to begin with, but like I said, I was being a little bit nervous to make sure we, how far did we go here? We're gonna go right to that spot. See ya, DMAC. Thanks for stopping by. No, the ribbing is from Nick of Time. It's quite stout too. I've used it a few times now. This is probably my last project. I've gotten so much mileage out of it. <laughs> Your favorite ice cream seller opens on the first day of spring. Still cold, yeah. Yeah, ice cream places really struggle during the winter. You live in pa Palm Springs. They used to live in paradise. Oh, really? They relocate after the fire. People went everywhere. Okay, we're gonna clip into, that seems so far down, because uh, of my sewing. Yeah, it's a little far down. Clip to there. This one looks a little better. You get more, what? Oh, really? You, you pin less and it works for you? Good, I mean, if you like that, you don't have to. Exactly, Curtis. Same with me. I would hardly call anything here um, of our winter dead though. <laughs> dead of winter. <laughs> okay, so. I'm going to kind of stretch my collar and find where it wants to land here and pin a spot. Line up all these raw edges and my seams here. Yeah, you have to tune it out. It, it's, it is a lot, Julie. I am really glad we're finally securing the facing because it is fiddly. Ice cream is a year-round sport. I mean, if it's cold, I just have some peppermint tea with it. <laughs> I, you know, like. Okay, so right here, what's gonna happen is we're going to, and mine is really far down, like it shouldn't be that far down. Um, but if yours is, you know, on the seam line, yours is probably like up to here, right? I just, I don't know, I got a little aggressive there. So what's gonna happen here is this collar, let's just look at just the collar. So we're looking at the front neckline right here. Here's my zipper. Here's the shoulder seam, right? So this collar, it's gonna get pulled up here. And now we're just gonna look at this neckline seam now as its own thing. So think of this as the end point of that. And uh, we're gonna go around the neck and then the same with the facing. So I'm just stretching this like this, finding where this wants to land. There is notches on the rib. I just can't see mine, the chalk kind of wore off. And then we're gonna line up our facing shoulder seam as well. Oh, it's still before the fire. So many crazy stories like that too. People that just bought their house, like our friend, like she relocated here for a job, 
her family stayed where she lives normally, and so but she just bought a tiny little house in Paradise to live in while she when she would work here every other week or whatever. And when uh, moved in, moved, went away for a show, <laughs> and her house burned down. It's crazy. She's one of the few people that could sell the land though because she had an outbuilding, like a, a huge shed survive and people needed that kind of thing so desperately here because if they were rebuilding or something like that they needed a place to store things that was secure you guys all make it sound like i this is easy but i'm distracting myself by chatting with you when you so perpendicular permanently Okay, so see, look, I'm going to look at this facing edge and this fabric edge and line those up. Yeah, I have a lot of collars sitting out there, but that's just my bad. All right, so we're going to start at that point that we clipped to. I think I my thread came in. It did. Dang it. First try. All right. I'm just gonna put a back stitch in, and now I'm gonna arrange all of this here. All right. So we have this neckline. Right. Straighten it all out. We're gonna pull the ribbing to the raw edge. Line up the facing. Now it's pretty smooth. I really wish I had a pin cushion here. You know, it's so funny. I was washing all the dog beds, and you know how a little like dog beds will have that um, fabric on the bottom of it, and it's like it's like Pellon, like sewers recognize it. It's like weak Pellon. And that stuff just like shreds and it falls apart. And the rest of the dog bed is fine, right? So I've replaced that in a couple of our little dog beds for Loki because the bed's fine. And so the other day I was washing one of them and there was a pin still in there from like two years ago when I replaced the bottom of that dog bed. I can't get a pin to stay in my project sometimes when I'm sewing that long. Couldn't believe it. And he'd never poked himself with it. It was just sitting there, clear as day, one of these big yellow pins. It wasn't easy to get it in there. I just like kind of sloppily edge stitch a piece of fabric right over that pellon. And it actually ends up looking good because it's in the crease of where the, the bolsters are, you know? All right, so here we are again. We're at the trickier part, right? So just like look at this, get this all like straightened out so it looks a little more sane, right? So we're gonna give this a little tug, pull the ribbing down to the neckline, line up all those raw edges, and then make sure that our facing and our fabric are lining up and we're gonna go right to that pivot point there. Make sure that, you know, it's in the sewing. All right, let's 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 inspect it. Make sure there's no surprises. Like that tuck right there because of the quilting. Lovely. Look at that, there's another tuck. Oof, I am not selling you guys on using quilting, I bet. Quilted fabric. The quilting. <laughs> nope. No. He never, no, he loves that little bed. He is in love with that little bed. If he's, he follows me around, like, like he just follows me everywhere I go. And sometimes I'll just bring that bed and just plop it down so that he'll stay in the bed and be comfortable. Cause I feel kind of bad that he's following me around. He'll be just standing there like this, like falling asleep, standing on his feet, waiting to see where I'm going to sit. I'm just like, sweetie. <laughs> I feel like this this is not adhering great to the, I was a little nervous about um, 
ironing it on there because of the synthetic. So I think I'll do a better job when we press this out. All right, let's find those tucks though and deal with those. So are they a big deal? Where did it go? this out too. I mean, I, I could probably let that go because it's right in that corner. This one, those are those, that's them. This, this one here. It's the quilted fabric that's fiddly. Because it's so thick, it's actually really thick. So when I pulled it apart, like this looks really thin, but when I pull this apart, the batting is, is really thick on this thing. It's pretty puffy. So then, you know, like when your machine is going along it, all it does, wants to do, I mean, look at how much I can push it down. It just wants to create these little tucks. So yeah, that one right there is, so like that tuck, well that, that actually looks pretty solvable right here. It's There's three layers of fabric here, right? So the tuck is actually on this layer right here. We're gonna straighten it out a little bit. And just so you all know, like there is a how to on the wardrobe by me YouTube channel for this jacket. If you don't want to deal with my fiddly stuff <laughs> or ice cream. If you don't want to deal with ice cream though, I don't know. How many of you are not ice cream lovers and what's your sweet or is it that? Okay, only the sweet eaters. Because there's people that are just like, I just don't have a sweet tooth. My thing is cheese or chips. Like, I get it. I get it, you know. But what about the people who are sweet eaters? Is it just straight up chocolate? Yeah, a walk, walking foot could probably help. This one right here. Do I want to deal with this one? I'm going to look inside here. So you can barely even tell it's a pucker. It looks like a stitching line. Let's just take a chance. I think that's straight up a back stitch right there. Just pull out one stitch and pull out one more. And we're just gonna take our awl and kind of move that little tuck around and see, can we, can we move it? Like, can, is it, can we get rid of it or not? Maybe not. Jam, roly poly, and custard. You are, okay, a custard. Cookies, right, cookies. How could I forget cookies? I like cookies with ice cream. <laughs> Ooh, pie. I like cake too. I don't like frosting, but I like cake. I love cold cake. I guess I like cold dessert. I like cheesecake too, but it can be a little much. Like I'm not always gonna be a cheesecake person, you know? If I don't have ice cream in the house, I have a bowl of cereal. I like the coldness of a bowl of cereal. It's a good backup. I, I will just make a little too much of it. All right, so I'm gonna try and pull this fabric. So let's hope I didn't make it worse. I didn't make it worse. It is a little better. I'm not gonna monkey around with it anymore. I really don't think that's gonna be something that bugs me. Donuts, ooh. Okay. All right, let's check it out. Wait, we need to clip the neckline, so don't panic yet if your neckline's feeling funky. looking real. Look at that quilting matching. All right, we're gonna clip the neckline. Get rid of all this extra collar I have. You probably don't. You probably did a better job. 
Don't cut anything else but what you plan on cutting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna clip the fabric first and see if I need to clip the, the um, rib knit. So I'm just kind of under here clipping the neckline. The seam allowance was supposed to be three eighths. <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's a lot of layers. I'm gonna just trim the, the knit down. <clears throat> You guys know what's coming. Dutch licorice, okay, see, I, me too. I can have Dutch licorice every day. I can have ice cream and licorice and watermelon. Those are my three things. Um, me Made May is coming. Prepare yourselves. I, I haven't uploaded a video to my channel in months. Like since I think December. Like I, yeah, I know I did the cashmere thing, but that was, you know, that was a job. Um, and I'm starting to feel like it's not, you know, I'm kind of bummed about it in a way, but I, re I really do have this really big project I wanna work on. I'm trying not to fall prey to my own distractedness and go, or or my my own like worries and go. Okay, let's let's do a massive upload series in May. I think someone needs to talk me out of it. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. Okay, home stretch. Very awkward to do. I think it's just the knit, the quilting, all that. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Margie. Um, <clears throat> oh, apple fritters are pretty good. Margie, so here's my deal with the thing with licorice is do you guys have to worry about when you go to the doctor, do you get a lecture about your blood pressure? Yeah, that does help, Malin. Thank you. You're so puzzled by your princess themes. Are you coming to a um, workshop next week, Sydney? I can help you. That lays nicer. Yeah, I am doing, hi, Nathmi. I am doing, I'm going to definitely do that as my sews for May. Okay. That's <laughs> fluff. I'm tired of this fluff. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull that out through the seam here, though. There it is. Right there. Okay. Any more? No. It looks so good. Okay. We're done, right? <laughs> What's next? I think we are... I, I hope I get through this whole thing today. Oh, it's in the trash. I found my pattern piece in the trash too. All right, so I think we are going to do the sleeves now. Yeah. Sleeves. Um, lining and sleeves. Ribbing for the cuff. We have so much to do. Oh, okay. I'm not doing much about, I'm not doing anything about the snug front. Yeah, I just decided to just leave it. It's a vest. <laughs> this even looks, this looks, I'm like really pleased with this. You know, I could have monkeyed around with this one right here, but 
Sometimes you just gotta let sleeping dogs lie, right? You can still see my Hera marker mark. I hope that goes away. I can still see my basting stitch. I'll probably remove that. I didn't want to have to worry about that. Um, you know, sometimes when you're doing zippers, you just gotta kind of uh, take it and then deal with what you get. <laughs> 10 weeks without sewing. Wait, why are you have, to, you're trying to figure out how I'm going to fit a sewing machine in the car with me for the Oh, try it on, let's try it on. I have a, a friend who has a, um, a treadle machine that is portable that she brings with her so she doesn't even have to have electricity. I don't really want to bonk you guys, so I'm going to do this for now. So look at, the back is pretty poofy. Right. Okay, this feels pretty good actually. That's not bad. The pockets are not in the right place though. <laughs> pockets are definitely kangaroo style. So I lowered the armhole a half inch and I angled the shoulder seam down a half inch. I did match the swirly quilting on the front. You know it. Yeah, that doesn't look too snug, but I took my sweater off. So I think like for just like wearing with a shirt, I think it'll be great. Okay. The leaves. I dropped one though, so I'm gonna grab it. Can I grab it? I just used my, I just used my um, tweezers. <laughs> Pick that up. Yeah, the pockets are not in a great. I think they need to be further back. They're a little too far forward. Cause I I used my welt template. I don't know why, but I. I can't keep straight what, which welt template I'm using these days. I thought I was using the one from the Tamarack that I just made in January, which ended up being perfect. And when, and I thought it looks just like the pattern piece. And then when, but when I had it out, it said Kelly Anorak on it. And I thought that's weird. Why does it say that? Because I used it for the Tamarack, you know? Um, so that's kind of odd. Maybe it was a different one. Like the Kelly Anorak has a very wide center front flap system and zippers. So it's fine for that. Well, and the Kelly Anorak also doesn't have, it, the, zip, the, the pockets are a little different. All right, I'm gonna put a, a um, I'm actually going to make my stitch a little longer for this. We're gonna put an easing stitch here. Gosh, I hope the sewing fairy is smiling on me right now because I don't really look forward to easing in a sleeve <laughs> that's quilted. <laughs> okay, let's put that back. Put this right sides together. So our sleeve underarms see if we can try not to get any tucks. I thought maybe I was on full screen for a second there. I'm trying to sew a little faster now too so we can get through this. You have to make room for it. Hmm. Yeah, I like Malin's idea. How attracted are you to the art of sashiko stitching? gonna check to see make sure there's no obvious tucks that would really bug me <clears throat> Mom's all, or you're all no thanks 
Yeah, right, Rachel? It's it's pretty thick. It is pretty thick fabric. I'm kind of hoping Cricut likes it. Then maybe I could just make myself another one. Would I? Um, no, it's in the guild too, Donna. Like I did a little post yesterday about what happened. A little tuck there I'm fine with because it's up high. There is one right here though. Let's try and get rid of that one. It's right here. There's like two there. So because I um, also angled the top of the shoulder, that helped maintain the, uh, sh the same exact armhole. I got kind of lucky that way, that it needed both. So basically, like think of it this way, I took the armhole, like let's say this is the armhole, and I went like this. And that's all I did. Yeah, knitting is a good travel hobby. If you don't already know how to do it, I can't imagine trying to learn how while I was traveling though. Yeah, you need like a, um, um, dang, tip of my tongue. What's the, what's the slow sew, sewing movement gal, um, Shan, Alabama Shannon. You need an Alabama Shannon kit. <laughs> That would be a good project. Did I get rid of it or not? I guess not. Did I add another one? I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> Knitting is small. Okay, actually I want these right side out. This feels pretty good. It just feels like no, if, it, if it's really perfectly. Welcome, Tracy. I, I saw a new subscriber. Oh, there was someone else too that I can't pronounce the name of. All right, so we have, so these sleeves were asymmetrical along here and I fixed it. Thankfully, because the um, quilting is a little hard to cut accurately, I had a little play in there, so that's good. Oh, that's good, Aisha. This is the back. All right. Here we are, we have our sleeve. Like the, When I'm putting my sleeve to my body, I feel like it's easy to get kind of <clears throat> lost. So garment inside out, front is up. Sleeve right side out, and then I just find the, you know, if you put the front up, right, then you're in the same, you have the same, the right armhole, right? Front up, front up, right side out, inside out. Put it right sides together. And then let's let's draw up the armhole and see. Usually I draw it up before I get it in there, actually. Let's see how hard this is gonna be. You have her book? Oh, so you have been a little interested in some hands sewing. That sounds simple, Shim. <laughs> Oh, and you know, cross stitch has gotten pretty modern. Like there's a lot of modern designs out there. My eyes don't like cross stitch. Okay. I mean, it is drawing it up, so that's, that's good news, right? Yeah, I know you do. What's Bernadette Banner up to these days? I haven't seen one of her videos in a while. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> that was before reading glasses. Oh my goodness. No thanks. I used to be friends with the gals who are uh, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And um, I tried getting into it. And I would do a little, I did a little bit. They have fun designs. Oh, she took a hiatus. Maybe that's why I haven't seen anything. All right, so we're just going to pin the top and the bottom. See if I can find the top notch. Oh. Come on. It's got to be here. Come on. Where's the notch? I had notches on the for the front and back. All right, that looks like I could probably use a little bit more. Yeah, I hear that one, Jan. I hear that. She moved to like England too, right? Is she doing something there? Did she just move there for content maybe? That would be legit be a part of that group, that crowd there. She wrote a book so fast. Like when she wrote that book, like when I, I, I watched her making of her book, um, man, the, she had the schedule. It was incredible. I was like, really, I think about it. I think about like that kind of discipline and schedule. So smart. And I don't know if she had to do that for like a, for a deadline or if it was like a personal thing, like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I really need this to be done by whatever date, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I moved during the panini. I bought a house during the panini. I don't recommend it. <laughs> My daughter graduated high school during the panini. Don't recommend either. <laughs> Feels like I'm not getting tucks. I am not confident I am not getting a few tucks. But it's going in pretty easily. Oh, on Skillshare. Skillshare. She'll be fine on there. Skillshare is a strange platform for payment. Really strange. Oh, really, Aisha? What was your book about? Malin, uh, did you see that Lisa Bardot is coming out with a book? I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know how she does it, man. She is so, I mean, she's putting out brushes, content, um, wrote a book. Trying to make this a little smoother transition. All right, let's see how my tucks are. <laughs> okay, I have one here. Okay, I, I will take this. This is, this is great. I just have to get rid of this one tuck. Natural and ecologic sustainable baby care. Oh, very cool. Okay, my fingers are right there. And it's on the sleeve. So it's in, where is it? Where, oh, look at it, look at it. Look at this tuck. It's actually kind of the worst kind. See it? Yeah. Yeah, she just announced it um, in the 
um, on Instagram, I'm pretty sure. And then in the pre-order, it comes out in October. For those of you who don't know, Lisa Bardot, she's not a sewing person. Um, she does Procreate brushes and she also has a community. This prescription is not right. <laughs> It, is it, or is it me? Like, I'm, I never, um, I don't know a whole lot about, like, eyesight. <laughs> I know how annoying it is that I can't see as well as I used to. But is there a point where, like, I don't, I don't have, like, the strongest prescription, I don't think. I think it's pretty, like, average, right? Is there a point where they just can't make your vision that great with glasses? Or is it that I just need to go and say, no, I can't see as well as I could on my old glasses. No, I went, I got into the community. I did it when she did her, um, she had like a lock-in time for her rate. I did it then. I can't, I know. I've already had them remake them like three times. I'm embarrassed to go back. The first two times, one of them, they did it wrong. They just used the wrong lens. The second time, I knew I was like, this isn't this isn't my not the right prescription. So then I went and got a new appointment and a new prescription, and then I had to make it uh, make them again. So, and they kept doing it for free, so it made me kind of feel bad, because <laughs> the first two, they, it wasn't even them. Like it wasn't their doctor, you know. Okay, so that's like the worst kind of tuck because see, now I have these needle holes low on the cap because it, it pleated the fabric up there. I'm going to kind of hope that they kind of uh, smooth out over time, but they're probably not going to. Not 100%. Well, hello. My, my little stream deck just fell off. Why did that do that? <laughs> All of the courses that she comes out with are in that community, which is really cool. Oh, interesting. The point that really bad enough that they can't be corrected at 20. Okay. Right with contacts. Right, Kathleen? I'm about to get my old glasses out and they aren't that great. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's see. I got rid of the tuck. I barely even see the stitches because there's like these little, you know, it's like the quilting. That'll do me. Okay. Let's do our other sleeve. That went in so smooth. I'm so happy. Oh, really? So this, it's this pair. So this pair needs to be able to read the chat and look at a computer and thread a needle. <laughs> um, when I'm at home looking at my computer, I have to sit far away from my computer to be able to look at it. What? All right. I'm just putting my seams open because they're quilted. Part of me wants to, like, you see how this is, this is gonna stick out into my jacket like that. I think it could have been wise to stitch it down, you know, open it top stitch it along either side of the seam if you're okay with that look because that's always going to poke into the garment against the lining and it takes up space right and i already have this sizing issue all right let's see where's the there is the notch which is okay oh this had pushed the seam that way
I need like three pairs of glasses. <laughs> you know? Where's my, there it is up there. Okay. Yeah, mine was great. I never had problems. And then my mid thirties, it was all the CAD work on the computer. I really think that's what it was. Cause they told me they were like, yeah, this is, you know, you're kind of wearing out your eyes by doing this kind of stuff. So my main screen, oh, it did. I think I, it's time to just order another camera. You know, I'm sick of dealing with this. Unless it's this cord. I don't have trifocals. I don't think I'm up for that. <laughs> oh, uh, sharpness. Love it when my hands look terrible. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, Julia. Julie. <laughs> Yeah, I might do that, Barbara. I already have a, I have another pair that's for like, now I can grocery shop and see. <laughs> Cause I was just wearing these, my computer glasses everywhere I went, except driving. I don't drive with them. What is severe nearsighted? I would think that means that you, you can see really close really well because you're sighted, you're sighted for near vision. I'm farsighted. I wouldn't even call it that anymore. <laughs> I'm struggling sighted. <laughs> and now they're just like, oh yeah, this is your eye sight is like it's totally normal like what you lose each year you're in the normal range I'm like okay it doesn't feel normal I think too that um I, if I do too much I feel it you know and I just need to rest my eyes I'm not someone I'm one of those people that does like I overdo everything you know what I mean I don't know what that means. Oh, I see. Okay. So, yeah. I see. I see what you mean, Barbara. Okay. Whoops. This is a lot of gathers here. That is a lot of gathers. We're going to shift a little bit here. Tweezers. Oof, it's life changing, Curtis. Especially as a sewer. The panini kind of disrupted all of mine. And um, my eye place like closed down completely, you know, not completely, completely forever. But I was just like, okay, like I, I need glasses. <laughs> Hey. There's this one pin over here kind of bugging me. Let's pull this all around here. There we go. I think I have too much gathers in here. I'm kind of smoothing out my quilting. That's why I'm kind of being fussy about this because of that one pleat I got on the last sleeve. Ouch, this pin just needs to go. It kind of makes me cranky when I get poked by pins. All right. Still feels like I'm going to get a tuck, though. Oh, you can take out the splinters in your fingers. Wow. Oh, 
I just think like, man, goodness help my husband and I being able to read the, uh, like, you know, anything on a package 10 years from now. <laughs> We're going to need a seeing eye dog, like a dog that can actually see for us and read the package to us. Okay. I have one little tuck right here. And weirdly, I have one on the bodice right there. Nice, Terry. I like that you're getting a jump on summer. Oh, like I can see it kind of right there. It's so puffy, this fabric. All right, let's, let's just take out a little bit right here. What kind of fabric are you using, Terry? Are you using the twill that you like? I know you have like a preferred twill, right? Oh, there it is, there, there it is, okay. I need to get a little further. Right here. You should absolutely have another ice cream first. Are these like little individually wrapped ice creams? I have to know so much about this, don't I? I'm so nosy. Okay. Oh, the camo twill. Oh, okay. You're making a bunch though. Got those growing kids, man. <laughs> this situated and everything just pull everything get it nice and flat I go over these things and I'm like oh that felt thick oh no look there's that <gasps> okay phew okay like a little jacket. It's like definitely a single layer, like wear only a single layer underneath. Peanut chocolate covered almond vanilla ice on a stick. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Those are good. Weird name. I know what you're talking about. The Hagen Dazs. A reading app for my phone. Is there a threading app? <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to the lining here. We have a whole other garment to put together. We also have these knit cuffs. So we're gonna put these right sides together. I'm going to do this at kind of a small seam allowance. I like loose cuffs. <clears throat> Did I run out of thread? Oh. Ruh -ruh. Oh, no, I didn't. What happened? It's funny. Why would you do that? Let's get our hand away from the needle with our foot on the pedal. Okay. This stuff's kind of dark on the camera. Ooh, I don't think my machine likes this fabric. That's funny. 
I don't have a knit needle in here, you know, like a stretch needle, so it might be kind of like, eh, I don't like it, you know? Is my needle shot? Is your needle shot at? What? <laughs> Oh, it's gorgeous. They're nice. Yeah, this is this. It's pretty stout. I mean, it's not like stout like that. This, this, it's not hard to sew. But yeah, it's pretty stout. That's also, oh, is my needle ruined? Oh, I don't think so. I, I probably could change it. I have been doing a lot of thick stuff, you know. All right, we're going to put this wrong sides together. But yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell this is not a bamboo knit, right? It's definitely more industrial, kind of store-bought, letterman jacket-ish. You know? It's perfect for these kind of sturdy jackets, you know? The things like where you're probably not going to stretch any of this stuff very much, right? I think I will just change my needle just to make sure. <clears throat> I tried on my raglan that I made during the, um, oh yeah, my needle does not feel that great, during the stream yesterday that I did for the binding attachment, and it's awesome. It's like, it, it just, I just love the look of that navy blue white baseball jersey look, you know, and it's loose. Oh, the other funny thing I forgot to tell you guys about that fabric was that it's like, one of two fabrics in my place here that's not pre-washed and I had a note inside of it so I remembered. And so that's why I was like struggling to come up with something to make. So I was like, well, I'm gonna make something for the stream that's not usable. And I just thought, I'll just make a loose pajama type baseball jersey. We'll make it loose enough that if it shrinks a lot, it'll still be fine. But it looks kind of good. Yeah, right? I know what you mean, Terry. It holds its shape, yeah. Oh gosh, that's that's how it is here. Like Tahoe. Tahoe is having a banner here. <laughs> okay, got my little cuffs here. Nice thready things. So we could put the cuffs on the jacket, right? Or are we gonna do that with the lining? We might be doing it with the lining. Oh, so it looks like the cuff's already on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, we do. Okay. We can put him now. Yeah, you do, Sydney. And then put the other one. We're gonna put this inside the cuff here. If you have a free arm, you, you didn't have to turn it, you know, right side out. You could put it around the arm of your machine. Most machines though are too small, the, the um, free arm. Or not too small, too big. All right, we're just gonna plop it in there. And it won't have to stretch very much, but I'm gonna put my needle down I'm gonna pull this knit to fill the whole cuff right now, and now I'm gonna hold it and just sew it in place. Easy peasy. Okay, let's check it for tucks because of the quilt. Looking legit, right? Again, we're gonna put it in there, right sides together. I'm just lining up my seam. 
because it's not a sweatshirt, I can just keep all these seams like open, right? Because it's gonna be lined. Okay, stop with this needle down, stretch the rib to fill the whole cuff, and then hold it. Sometimes a free arm can help you keep it stretched. <clears throat> Sometimes a free arm will, um, you'll get hung up on it. But you probably know that spot on your free arm that it does that. I've had a free arm, I know. <clears throat> okay. All right, now we're gonna do our lining. So let's change our thread. Not to mention, I need to save my green thread for top stitching later on, you know? Let's see here. Just do cream. That cream? Yeah, it is. Okay. Thought it was white for a second there. <laughs> I'm like, I need, I need cream. Kind of slacked on always keeping two of every of my staples, you know, two bobbins of every one. And this is like, this is a good example of why that happens because I'm going to thread the machine for this and I'm not going to set up another cone over there, making sure I'm refilling with the other bobbin. The weather's been really pretty here, but it has been cold. My office stays really warm, unfortunately. All right. Okay. Here. All right, so the lining has a couple of little things we need to do first. This is this is the oh okay, it's right here. There's a little pleat right here at the center front. So you're gonna match these two notches right here, and we're just gonna sew across them. No, that just pushed it out of the way, and then we're gonna push it up. Right? Wait, do I do this wrong sides together? <clears throat> I mean, right sides together? I might, wait, 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 let's make sure I did that right. I might not have. Right sides, oh no. Yeah, right sides facing, okay. I did do that wrong. I was like, wait, I can't really push that up. That would be kind of weird. It's about to be golden nugget days here. I'm in gold mining world. <laughs> There's like a um, annual festival. Dang, really got that edge on there good. You guys aren't ready for summer? I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that like, like here there's the weather's interesting. I, I like it. It's always kind of, um, there's always something going on with it. So I actually don't mind it, but people start dreading summer and it, it kind of bums me out. I'm just like, but it's not forever, you know? <laughs> I like winter. I like spring. I like fall. I like just any season, mainly because they, there's, they don't last for too long. Spring and fall here are incredible. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna push this little pleat up. That's what it said to do, although it doesn't, oh yeah, maybe I'll, I'm gonna yoink it over to match there. Right there, and then where's my other one? Here's this one, make it flush, push it up, 
We'll stitch it down. And then there's a pleat at the center back neck. This will give you a little room in your jacket. We're gonna put this right sides together, right here. You can see it kind of goes up there and we're gonna um, put this right sides together. <laughs> oh, the air quality. Oh, I don't know if we have that. We do for the smoke when there's fires. That's what I don't like. That's what I dread. I guess that's true. I should, I'm gonna sew this for two inches. So about right here. And then we're gonna push it to one side, line it up with the neck and stitch it down. Um, last, summer, last summer was amazing. No fires in our area. It was the best summer we'd had in so long. And so I have one good summer and I'm like, bring on summer. <laughs> But every summer before that, I'd be, start dreading fire season. So I guess there's that, that's true. All right, so we're gonna put this right sides together. So the shoulders. We could do the side seams. Why is this not fitting? Is there something over here too? Why is this not fitting? Oh, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't do my change to my lining. And I think I should. I did it to the facing. Oh, nice, Sydney, go for it. Reflective, oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, not, not, yeah, I got it, yeah. Smart. Uh, why doesn't this match right here? Did I cut something funny there? Huh. There isn't like a little tuck on the side seam, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Cause it just says to sew the lining. Yeah. I don't know why mine doesn't match. All right, well, I'm going to do I want to like force it to the top? Hmm. Cause I'm about to, I'm going to alter this armhole and shoulder to match what I did on the jacket. Cause that, that was really easy to do. I'm going to take this out though right here and see how, if it's kind of balanced, if I pull this, if I line it up at the bottom down here, like this, Pull that, and I'm going to trim this armhole already. Hmm. Well, we're gonna take a chance on that one. This must be something I did in the cutting. All right, so for the top here, I took off like five eighths of an inch, but remember there's a facing here, right? So the neckline was here. So from this point to here, so it's going to be a little bit in right here and a lot in down here like that. And then my armhole needs to get deeper. I'm a little nervous about trimming with that little extra there. So I think I'm just gonna trim this one side only. Oh yeah, I bet. 
Yeah, it gets hot there for sure. Same here. I used to have a pool. Never again. <laughs> Let's line this up down here. I don't know why that's off like that. It bugs me. Was the fabric like short there? It doesn't look like it at either end, you know? So hopefully, uh, I am only going to trim one. This, I just want you to know that the, doing this is a little cavalier, like any pattern drafters out there right now are screaming at me that I did this because I can't just like trim off the arm like that. It could make things a little bit balanced kind of funny. It's a stretch poplin, so I'm kind of banking on that helping. Um, but the fact that I had to lower my whole armhole, I'm not really comfortable with now trimming another five eighths of an inch here, you know? So that's why. So I'm gonna leave it like that. All right, now we have my old sleeves and I cut the lining out here. And, um, <clears throat> I like, Christina uses a traditional way to sew in a, a traditional in a good way. Maybe not, I shouldn't say traditional. I should say the way I learned to do a fully lined jacket through the sleeve so you don't have to hand sew anything. So for one of the sleeves, we're just gonna sew the whole underarm seam. And you need to make sure you have a left and a right. So this is my back. And this is my back. So on this one, we're gonna leave like a five inch hole. I say go bigger than smaller because, especially if you're using like a lightweight lining like this, the lining is going to show some strain when you pull the whole jacket through. So I'm gonna leave a much bigger hole than that. All right, so now we're gonna put the sleeve on. We're speed sewing now. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. <laughs> But after this step, we're going to put the lining to the jacket and we'll be done, so. All right, so let's gather up our sleeve cap a tiny bit. I didn't lengthen the stitch this time because this fabric will gather up no problem. It wants to do that. That's so interesting, Terry. I've seen the tomato things that hang. I wonder if that would help with deer or if they're just like, perfect, now it's ergonomic. I'm already trying to talk myself out of getting something to drink across the street after the stream. We finally have somewhere really cool in town that makes really good stuff. And you know what they got there? They got traditional Thai iced tea. <laughs> Takes like five minutes to make it and it's it's identical. It's, it's amazing. They also have really good chai. I guess it'll depend if I'm hot or cold. 
but I already had one this week, so maybe I should just maybe wait till next week. <laughs> All right, it's a little too much there, so let's pull out a little bit. All right, let's put our sleeves right side out. This is always how I do it. Garment inside out. This time I have the back facing up, so let's see, is this the back? This is the back. Slip it in, sew it on. I'm going to just offset the seam allowances. <laughs> no. Oh, night, Julie. Yeah, you work nights, don't you? Yeah. Plus, it's late there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's getting late. Almost your all bedtime. I don't think we have a bar in town yet. My husband was like, maybe I should open a bar. And I was like, no. <laughs> First of all, no. Second of all, no. That's how I feel about that. And I rarely say no to my husband. Like, I am all about supporting whatever he wants to do. This is a guy who is asleep hours before me. <laughs> He said, oh, I'd have staff for that. I'm like, until they call you in the middle of the night and there's an issue and I have to go. Mm -mm. All right, so we have a lot of gathers in this sleeve. No pins, see this, you know? You just need to gather it just before it starts to create the tucks. Where's my notched right there there we go if you ever need help setting in a set in sleeve i have two videos about it one with a french seam and one without my stitch length feels a little long for this lining right now but it looks okay i think i'm just not used to moving so fast after doing the quilting okay Oh yeah, that's awesome, Jan. There's a place that makes it locally here. It's, it's really, really good. I used to make it too, right from scratch, a long time ago. I, I don't think there's a store up here in Paradise that could supply all the things I need for it. I could go to I could go to the um, larger town to get it, but not here. Push the seam to the back. All right. I think my mom would be cute in this. I wonder if she'd wear this. It's green, that's one of her favorite colors. I'm trying to talk myself out of this fabric right now on Minerva. So I never noticed it. I love like Minerva, like I love Minerva as like working for them as like as an ambassador type of person, which I'm obviously not that great at. I hardly do anything. I could totally take advantage of their system much more, but I just don't. But um, I, the only thing is their photography on their website is does not show off their fabrics well enough. So <clears throat> I miss lots of really good things. One of them they just had in their in, on their Instagram reels was this one of a bunch of potted plants. And it's really, really cute. It's a rayon, or it's like a viscous shelly type of thing. It's so cute. And um, I was like, what? I've never seen this fabric before. You go to their site, it looks like a completely different fabric. So you just have to trust that I think the one on their Instagram looks a lot better. And I kind of want it. I'm trying to to um, talk myself out because I don't need it. All right, so here's our lining. Let's just give it a little press. We haven't been to the iron in a while. 
Oh, that's perfect, Jan. I bet that's great. You get all the great ingredients and things. Oh, it feels good just to stand up. Just iron a little bit. So satisfying considering I couldn't iron much on the quilted jacket. If you forgot to leave your underarm seam open when you're doing the lining, you could also leave your side seam open. It's a little easier to deal with. Weird little lining shell. All right, let the fun begin here. Okay, I think we do the sleeves last. Right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so I think we can just put this right sides together, right, like this. We're going to put this whole jacket right sides together, and we're going to go around the perimeter. And we're going to turn a corner right here. That was the thing I was a little bit nervous about before. So it's going to go you know, like that. We're going to turn that corner right there. And then we're going to pull it through the sleeve lining, the whole thing. So now you're going to line up all of your points. So for me, that's going to be like the shoulders. And let's see, what other guides do we have here? Not a whole lot. We do our sides, no, oh, not even our side seam really, unless you have your notch for your ribbing. Do I have a notch there? I don't know if I have a notch there. But we could put a, one at the center of the ribbing for the center back. So let's do that at least, because that's easy to figure out. Try not to stretch your rib. Right there. And then we have that for our lining. The stretch poplin may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> might make it a lot easier. Might make it a lot harder. Okay, there's one point two. Another shoulder up here. We have the center back neck. It's gonna be a journey. Nope, here we go. There's not really any other point except for, you know, we know we want this to go like this. So you're going to pivot right here at this point. So if we line up these raw edges, right here is the pivot point where the seam is, the seam juncture with the facing <clears throat> at the rib here. And same with this, you want this little edge to hang past the ribbing 
the steam al allowance right there, just like that. I think she said two shirt patterns. I'm gonna start at a shoulder seam and then go down. That way I feel like it's like the easiest thing because we have the um, curve of the back facing and that pivot at the corner. I think this the shoulder seam got pushed the wrong way at the sleeve. I'm gonna go with it because it actually offsets the thickness here at the shoulder. That was actually an inadvertent good idea, but the other side won't be like that. All right, so we got that shoulder seam right there. Popping my facing out a little bit. And we're gonna find this point here. So what I kinda do is see this edge right here. I'm gonna line it up with the edge here like that. But we're gonna pivot before that. We just know that that's where it needs to line up. Oh, okay, Monica. Nice. I haven't made one of their patterns before. Let's get that shoulder seam lined up. All right, do you want me to bring the camera down? I don't even know if many of you are still here. <laughs> it's a long project. Fully lined jacket. I should have done more on Thursday. Here's that little pleat. So let's just get this to relax a little bit more and close the basting stitches in there. Oh, neat. Oh, and you have the patina. Oh, I saw they were just, um, weren't they just promoting that? I feel like they were. Oh, I remember, maybe you were looking for a good V-neck blouse. I remember someone was looking for that. This is a little longer here. So I'm not sure if I should force ease it in. Is it that my poplin is a little stretchy? I don't think so. I don't think it's really stretchy. Yeah, it's not stretchy vertical. I could let it hang off a little bit more. I could end up having other repercussions though, you know? All right, so now we're here, down here at the edge of the ribbing here. And we need to turn the corner and sew along the ribbing. So let's pull, peel back this ribbing here like this. Oh, there you go. Oh, cool, Curtis. Hopefully it's helpful. I don't know, I've had a journey, haven't I? All right, so you see how right here is our pivot point. So our needle's gonna go right into here and then we're gonna go around the ribbing. But you can see my shirt is a little longer than it needs to be, but we need to pivot right here. All right, leave your needle down and then you're gonna pull the lining over, which is obviously weaker than the quilting. Pull, 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 line it all up. Make sure nothing is gonna get under there. I wish it didn't look like it was struggling, but I think it's partly just because the quilting, I mean, yeah, the quilting and the ribbing are so much stronger than this lining. I really like the way that, that feels. Let's see. So this was our pivot point right here. Yeah, that's what we want. We want to pivot right there. But we should be at a three eighths inch seam allowance on the ribbing. And it feels like more. 
I'm just going to take it out and then inspect it. Yeah, that's my spot right there. See, and we pivot. Let's just trim this down a tiny bit. So we have the blend it in with that edge. And then this way, when I pivot, those lines will line up to each other, the raw edges. Okay, so here we are at the center front. This is my center front right here. My zipper right there. This is that little zipper facing, and here's the ribbing, right? Push that seam allowance. Make sure it's like nice and tidy under there. So just, just so it doesn't give you trouble. Pivot. And now, pull this over. Make sure nothing under buckles. It's gonna look like it is though, because it's such a lightweight fabric. I'm gonna just do a couple steps. There's just a couple, couple stitches. All right, so now we have my center back pin right there. So we know that we need to stretch the ribbing to match in between. Like this. Try not to stretch my lining since it does have a little stretch in it. And then we'll just attach this, line up the raw edges to each other. So far, so good. Way. So I'm going to check my lining on this side and see if I'm going to have the same length issue because I'm coming at it from the other direction. So I want to make sure that if I need to trim it, I have to trim it before I get there. Get this pleat relaxed. We're just walking it along the seam. Oh yeah, definitely. It needs to line up with this edge right here. And I have the same little extra there. So let's trim that a little bit off. Anyone remember, was it my front or my back side seam that was too long? All right, now we can continue to the front. So here, this time, we'll just line it up with this ribbing here. And we want our front edge of our lining to go 3 eighths of an inch past the edge of the ribbing here, right? So we're gonna line it up like this. So place your ribbing on there. It's gonna be a little, little um, tricky. When we clip into that corner, it's gonna lay a lot nicer. And that's one thing I didn't do when I turned my corner over there. If you need to, like if you're doing something even thicker than me, you could clip into it. I'll show you in a second. The ribbing makes this so easy because it just, you know, stretches to fit, right? Okay, so here we go. Welcome, Cecilia. I don't know if you're watching right now. All right, so see, here we go. Here's the ribbing. There's the center front facing, the zipper. This is the facing, the, not, the, the, not the center front facing. This is the center front facing. This is that little rib one, right? So we're gonna turn it so that it's kind of in its last position, right? And now we're gonna pull this and it needs to go three eighths of an inch past the ribbing because we're gonna pivot right there at that juncture. And this is where, if you wanted to, clipping from this facing edge towards that point where we're pivoting could be helpful. I'm gonna wait till later because this fabric is, um, you know, it's very thready when I clip it. And I just don't wanna take any chances that what if I wanna adjust something later, you know? 
So, but this is what makes this turn right here a little messy for me. I'll do one stitch and try and just get going. There we go. All right, now line up the spacing edge. Here's that little pleat. So just kind of tidy it up a little bit, make it lay nice and relaxed and flat there. And close your basting. Um, is it your first time doing a collar collar stand? Is that what you're, is that really what you're talking about? Well, he could read and watch my videos, Terry. <laughs> I have sewn a tropical shirt. It's actually the one by Wardrobe by Me. And um, I have lots of button up sew alongs. Fairfield. Do you have a pattern in mind? And what is it about it that's new for you? All right, so now this is the shoulder seam right here, and now we're gonna get into this little curvy area. So I know that's my center, and I think this is my center here. Let's see, it's not the center of the pleat. It's right here where I sewed this. Let's pull my label out of the way, and we'll line it up about right there. I think is a good spot. <laughs> I guess it, okay, yeah, so. If, <clears throat> I guess the way I would look at it is if you've been sewing a bit, you've sewn shirts, you've sewn sleeves, maybe you've done a button placket here and there, a, a Hawaiian shirt really isn't going to, um, like, I don't know, it's not going to add to your skills, right? You've already got those under your belt. So maybe it is time to do a collar and collar stand or is it the sleeve placket? So what you could do is, is say, all right, I'm gonna do a short sleeved button up with the with a collar and collar stand. And then my next one will be long sleeved and I'll tackle a, a sleeve cuff and placket. You never sewn a shirt before? Well, then maybe try the Hawaiian or tropical shirt because it's a great shirt, a line vest. Oh, that's that's a good project, yeah. Yeah, no, I think actually you're right. I think I would totally recommend doing a, a camp, I call those camp shirts. Just mainly because I can't call them a Hawaiian shirt, they're an Aloha shirt. <laughs> like traditionally speaking, only um, people, in the states or somewhere outside of Hawaii would say a Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> but it's an Aloha shirt. I'm being, I'm, I'm being silly, but yeah. Yeah, I would totally, right? Cause you'll have a nice shirt to wear and you're in North America. So you would end up getting to wear it in the summer. So go for it. You signed up as an apprentice, right? Not a journeyist. Because I was going to say, the journeyist has the button up sew along SBS skill building session. Yeah, me too, Mullen. All right. We're going to clip. We're going to clip this. We're going to clip this because once we turn it, we won't be able to later, right? So we're just going to clip this little curvy back facing. I'm looking at my stream and for some reason, it says one hour that I've been live for an hour. That's so weird. I don't, I, I don't know if I've just never noticed. Is it showing something else? 
I'm like, I'm live, right? You guys are still talking to me, so. <laughs> yeah, so if you end up doing a camp style shirt, I sewed the tropical shirt by wardrobe by me. If you end up doing a um, you see two hours. Okay, yeah. I, you know, and I'm thinking it's doing this. I, will, I won't even go into what it is. It's a weird traditional thing with video. Yeah, exactly, Sanwi. Yeah, basically, yeah. You mind state started two hours ago? Yeah, I started two and a half hours ago. <laughs> Right, exactly, Amy. I know, it's so weird. Okay, uh, down here, we're gonna clip into that little funny spot that I, we did the corner. Um, so if you end up picking a collared shirt, button up type of shirt, I have videos for doing a collar, collar stand, and bias plackets and tower plackets. So if your instructions aren't your favorite, you can use the video. The pattern pieces will probably look really similar. Or maybe that company has their own video for sewing their shirt. You never know. All right, you need to pay attention here. I'm just clipping into this pivot point right down here. It looks really messy, I know. There we go, that, Let's see if it starts to relax this corner here. All right, and now I'm gonna clip the ribbing. Do it layer by layer. I think most of the menswear that I've sewn is in a menswear playlist as well, if that's what you're talking about. Because I know you mentioned uh, something about menswear the other day. Because there's camp shirts for everybody, you know. Okay, clip this corner here. I'm just doing it layer by layer to make sure I don't clip what I don't want to clip, you know? I can kind of see then that it relaxes, you know? This is gonna be on the inside, but still you want to make sure it's not gonna pull your outer jacket weirdly. All right, what else do I need to think about here? Should we give birth to a jacket? Yeah, absolutely. I love sewing menswear. Um, yeah, and you know, it's almost July. We gotta start talking about what we're gonna sew menswear. We should do a Nomi pattern. That would be good. One of Julian's or um, Norris's. I love how I, I talk like I'm on a first name basis with them. <laughs> I am not, they do not know me. Although I've seen Julian here in the stream, which was really fun. Okay. There's, Christina's like, here you go. Now sew the jacket to the lining. <laughs> sew the lining to the edge of the right facing right sides together all the way around. Okay, yep, okay, I did that. Oh, we're gonna do the cuffs together. Then we're gonna give birth to it. I sometimes get a little spooked and I will turn it and then I will do the cuffs later. Which is my sleeve that has the hole? This is it right here. Should I do my sleeves now? No, I'm just gonna, uh, I don't know if she has you turn it first, does she? Oh yeah, yeah, she does, okay, that's what I do too, all right. Yeah, right, Malin, that's what I was thinking, and I'd like to support them. Oh, you guys see that there's some sort of big, like, announcement happening, I think with simplicity, oof, I feel my, the strain of that lining opening. I'm so glad I did the big one with this big quilted jacket. Look at 
like this. <laughs> I get a little impatient. Don't be like me. <laughs> it's a beautiful bouncing jacket. First thing I wanna look at is this corner right here. It's all right. What's that right there? It's like my, oh, the thread there. Maybe when I stopped and paused, that's probably what that is. I can pull that out. All right, let's look all the way around. Nothing weird except for my non-aggressive fusing of my fabric when I was a little worried. Okay, it's looking good. We still need to do the, the ribbing to it. Did I miss that step? No. Oh, we have to turn it inside out again. Oh. Okay. So when you sew your sleeves together on any kind of lined thing, triple check you don't twist your sleeve. So what I like to do is I put my arm in there and I put the sleeve, right? I've got the sleeve in there and I make sure the sleeve is not twisted already, right? I feel for the underarm seam and I line it up to the underarm seam of the outer garment, right? So look, there's my underarm seams right there, okay? So then what I'll do is this the sleeve that has the opening? See now, this is better when you have two sleeves with, a, with openings. Let's see what she says. Turn the wrong side of the jacket up. Oops, nope. Oh, oh. Oh, I thought she said turn it right side out. Dang it. Can't go wrong with a moto jacket. I don't think I want a moto jacket. <laughs> so one thing's great when you have the, the hole in the sleeve. The, this is my other sleeve that has the hole, I'm pretty sure. You can do it through that sleeve hole, so that's good. Let's straighten this one out too. So we're going to pin this first clip it or something so that we don't get it twisted. I haven't done this in so long, so I'm a little clunky about it. Sorry. I'm going to pin these together just so I know for sure I won't get that twisted. All right. Now we're going to do our other sleeve. Just do one pin. Don't overdo it because you may have to unpin it in order to turn it right side out. Sometimes you have to do that. Depends on what your project is. That'd be awesome, Terry. You think you'll sew that? That's gonna be cool, Malin. I love that. Okay, another pin. All right, now we're going to turn the garment inside out again. All right, so see for this one here, I just pulled it through the sleeve opening. I get, I be, I'm very literal about these kinds of things so I don't get it twisted. So see how we have this one sleeve pinned there. So I'm going to go through the hole just like this. Right. And now I'm going to unpin it. I'm going to put this right sides together. So I'm going to flip it inside to the cuff, hold it. And then kind of fold some and put it inside there. And we can sew this one now. So 
So basically what you're doing, you can fold up your sleeve like this so you have a little bit of a cuff and then insert it in there. I don't have much of my jacket turned. I can give it a little more slack. And stick it inside there. But your mo main thing that you just want to keep track of, and that's why I'm being so like, I keep everything very close to it. I don't move things very, I don't make very big movements. I don't want to lose track of what the inside is uh, or, or what, what side goes to what side and don't twist my cuff. You will someday twist your sleeve to your jacket. It's just tradition. It's a time-honored tradition <laughs> of sewing. Oh, I gotta switch my thread back. I mean, it's gonna be okay sewing on the lining, but you know. Maybe you guys could have a moto jack sew, mo moto jacket sew along. And maybe if someone got like the cashmere one, it could be everybody. And then there's the style arc one too, right? Try not to get a tuck in my lining. I'm not too worried about it if I do. I wasn't being very good about stretching my cuff as I go. I might get a little cut, a little tuck. It's probably also because the quilting was so thick. Okay, there we go. There we go. One cuff done. See? <laughs> I'm very methodical about this. Frozen camp. Oh. over here. I'm sorry you guys. The Moto Showdown. I like it. I can get a camera by our next live stream. Whoa. Jeez Louise. Sew down. Yeah, there you go. I like it. We're almost done with our jacket. Try not to bonk that thing. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Nice sleeve. There's our opening. The other one's gonna be a little trickier. We do probably need to turn in our, turn our jacket inside out because of the um, last step that we're gonna sew. So I'm just gonna reach through here. And again, I'm gonna be really methodical. <laughs> I'm going to, I my, my hand is in here. I'm gonna reach down the end of the sleeve and I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna hold all that together. I'm gonna pull it through this hole like this. Okay, so here's our sleeve. Right, and then it's pinned together right there. So it's pinned together, wrong sides together. This is the right side of the fabric, right? And the pin's on there, okay. So, let's put our cuff in there. So now, we just need to be really methodical again. Take the pin out. We're gonna flip this around, right sides together. If you're doing a lot of lined items, you will get your own little method. It won't be this literal. You'll, you'll be able to trust yourself a lot more once you get the hang of it. A lot of threads going on here. Let me get my machine to help me here, so. My 
my back stitch. All right, and now I'm gonna pull more sleeve out just so I have a little bit more to work with. And then put this right sides together and sort of stretch it in place. I feel like a, a ridge there. I don't know why I'm feeling a, oh, oh, I see. It's the seam allowance of the ribbing was folding back on itself. I'm glad I checked. Thought it was a wrinkle in the ribbing. I was kind of worried that I didn't catch one side. Oh, nice, Curtis, there you go. Yeah, right, Terry, I know. It's a thick jacket, I just knew. As long as you close the hole above and below it, it's just, you know, it's, it's so easy to sew that hole shut later on. So you might as well just give yourself a nice big opening. And if you don't like doing it in the sleeve, you can do it in the side seam. You just will see the edge stitched seam on the inside of your jacket. Unless you hand sew it shut. You crazy person, you. <laughs> This is not a couture channel. We've established that. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna pull this. <clears throat> I'm just gonna reach in. Okay, let's feel it. Okay, not twisted. Great. All right, so our last step this is the uh, gathering stitch. I really want to pull on it, but we're just going to clip it. <laughs> oh, nice, Monica. Enjoy. All right, our last thing is that we're going to like make this so that it's not wishy like this, right? So we're going to reach through here again and turn the jacket inside out. I know you don't want to do it, but you're going to have to. I don't want to do it either, to be honest. I sort of want to just stitch in the ditch. I wish I would have done this before. Could I have done, done this a little better? Jeez. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. It's a long one. Okay, here we go. So now this right here, we're just gonna attach this to itself and then we're done, all right? That's it, that's all we have to do. We're just gonna sew this ribbing seam together, okay? Have a good weekend, Terry. All right, so we're gonna line this up so that our ribbing is directly across from itself. I have my seam allowance pushing this way here and it's pushing that way there. So you know what I'm gonna do is um, find the halfway point and I'm gonna clip it right there so that I can flip it. <laughs> when it's sewing together. See, so this one will flip towards the inside, the other one will flip to the, towards the outside. Miss the batting. Night, Mullen. Are you taking out too? Cool. Yeah, cool, cool. See ya. All right. So yeah, now we're just gonna stitch this all together and you don't want to get any torquing, so no willy-nilly stuff. No monkey business, okay? Hopefully you have all your notches in place because mine are kind of gone, long gone. All right, so we'll put these together. Same thing, I'm gonna find that halfway point. I 
there. Push the seam allowance towards it, just like that. Night, or see ya, Monica. Enjoy the sunshine. All right, I'm gonna pull this like this. I wish I could tell if it was torquing. See, like there's a side seam here. Maybe I should aim for the side seam like that. Could be a good idea. Right? Let's see? Kind of looking at the grain line of my ribbing here. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to trust that. I'm going to find my center here. They're irregularly marked. What does that mean? I really wish I would have marked the center of this with a clip, even though I told you guys it's not a good idea to do that. I didn't, I forgot that this could lead to torquing. I'm nervous now. I'm kind of feeling it in there. try and look inside and see if I can tell if it's torquing or not, you know? I don't know if I can though. Feels good. Oh, really? That's not good. That's a bummer. That would make me cranky too. All right, I'm just going to stitch this down right along the seam line there, or at least next to it, so I can take it out if I have to. all your pins this is your last chance oh really Oh, that's the quote from the website. Oh, good thing you checked. Wow. Good catch. I forget to look at the errata on the website so often. Um, I was looking at one pattern company recently and they had it listed right with the pattern where you buy it. And that is so smart. So like you're looking at the, the pattern listing for sale and then there's a little hyperlink to the errata. And I think that that's the only way to go about that because then you're aware like, oh, I better download that first, right? So they probably have Amy, but it's, but she's got the version before that. So they do. Cause I have patterns like that that have had that and I've just downloaded the, change, made the changes myself. <laughs> Because if you buy a pattern from a fabric store, you're not going to get the notification on your PDF, right? You've got a print version. All right, so we're going to pull this through. Let's really hope my knit isn't wonky at all. And then we're just going to close up the seam in the arm, and I think we're done.
I, I really should have, t I'm trying to rush this, and so I'm pulling this through so badly. <laughs> I know. There we go. Okay. Most of it. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you don't have that. No torquing. Looks good. All right, let's close the sleeve hole and then we'll try it on. This is it, right? Yeah, okay. So, I'm just trying to get this out so I can sew it shut. All right, so now we're going to sew this lining shut right here, right? And so we're not going to think too hard on it. It's inside the sleeve. You don't see it. Like you can see, rip my lining right there. So we're just going to pinch it. And we'll just edge stitch it shut. Oh, there is some top stitching on this as well. It's around the neck, zipper, and in right along that, that little rib facing, center front doohickey. Don't catch your sleeve. you'll never look at that again. <laughs> Very cute. Give it some good tugs here and there. So when you do this top stitching, you really need to make sure you, you know, you tug this away, get it nice and smooth. I would even like pin it through all layers, like maybe an inch away. Hi Raquel, how's it going? Raquel, I got you a discount <laughs> on the pattern. I think you're the one who messed, or um, commented, right? All right. What do you guys think? I think the sewing came out pretty nice. Sorry, the microphone's in there. <laughs> it looks great. It's a little small. Like the shoulders feel pretty narrow on me. I think I would mo mostly wear it unzipped. So I'm not sure how much of it a, of a jacket. Yeah, no problem. I'll show you here. This is it right here. It's on the screen up there at the top, Raquel.
and it doesn't expire. <laughs> Hopefully you heard, you heard that. <laughs> yeah, she was really nice. I just asked and she was like, sure. <laughs> okay, so we have the top stitching. I'll also touch it up with some pressing for those areas that I didn't, that I was a little nervous about pressing because of the fabric. Now I know it's fine. We did a lot in this, these three hours today. Okay, so the areas you want to top stitch. And get rid of some of this stuff on the table here. Uh, the areas you want to top stitch are around the collar and neck and down the center front here. And then um, um, they also recommend stitching right here in the ditch maybe to secure it or you can make it visible if you want. So let's kind of give us a good tug all the way around before we do any top stitching. And make it, I'm gonna make it really nice and smooth. I think, I, I feel like I have, sorry, I keep hitting the thing. I feel like I have finer pins somewhere. Hmm. Oh, you know what? They're at home. Shoot. I wanted to use my thinnest pins for this, even though it won't hold it very well, you know? I don't want to leave holes in my jacket. So that's what I'm going to do. See, because you see those little wrinkles. We really want to get this nice and taut when we do the top stitching. Hopefully, hopefully we can, so you don't want it to like blump over into the zipper area, right? Be really firm with it. I'm just pulling the lining, pulling the outer. You see, look at that, how it wants to wrinkle like that. But once you put it kind of in its curved position of, that the pattern piece was in, it's just nice and smooth. <laughs> like really let it know how you want it to end up. I'm gonna use a stouter pin right here because it's the shoulder anyway. That looks a little better, right? And once we're sewing it, we'll make sure we're spreading it apart and making it nice and taut. It always helps putting your sewing in the position of the shape of the seam, right? So, you know, maybe you're, when you're stitching along this edge here, you're straightening it out as you sew, but it's a curve. So try and keep it in the curve. That way you won't get these little, this little facing underneath to um, wrinkle. It'll help. I still have my stay stitching showing here. I'm going to remove that later. The top stitching won't affect that. All right, so I'm just going to pull. I'm pulling my lining underneath. Like this really firm. It's these, these kinds of little details that will make your, make or break it, honestly. And when you do this kind of top stitching, 
I would do the same direction on both sides. So if you come up from the bottom on one side, come up from the bottom on the other side. Okay. So we can stitch in the ditch here and here, maybe. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not very confident about stitching in the ditch through both these layers here. So maybe, maybe I'll just top stitch this right here. Maybe, I'm just gonna ignore that. We're just gonna top stitch. <laughs> Okay, this is it. Last thing we're sewing. I'm pulling my lining underneath, pulling my zipper, and I'm gonna try and maintain a nice, even stitch. It's not looking that even. I'm gonna go a little slower. Funnily, I have that line right here, the one you were supposed to iron. Um, I put mine a little further, like I didn't sew right on that. I actually have that as a guide right now. All right, we're gonna turn and go to the center back neck. And here I'm really gonna make sure I'm pulling and smoothing that underneath. Okay. I know it was really wrinkly under there. My hands are doing a lot of work right now. Pulling the jacket like this to stay in the curve. Where's the center back? Okay, I'm gonna back stitch right here. I just went just past it by accident. All right, and so let's see how I did. Well, not bad. It's not very even, but it is nice and taut. <laughs> it's not very even on the center front. It really shows. Let's get rid of some of these uh, pins here. So they're not in there for any longer than they need to be and they're not pulling on the fabric. All right, so now let's do this side. I think if I were a pattern company and I was like, I really want to have a motocross jacket or a bomber jacket or, uh, you know, any kind of jacket in my line, you really got to be up for the work, man. It sounds great until you're like, oh, I got to like be able to teach people how to sew this. Not for the faint of, faint of heart, is it? I'm not feeling very accurate because the it's all underneath my machine right now. Maybe it would have been worth taking the chance on going the other direction on the side just because of the fiddle factor right now. OK. 
Okay, here comes the neck. A little bit of work. Just gotta be methodical and plan it out. But it's all even a bad top stitching job is gonna make your jacket look polished. <laughs> I mean, depending on how you know botched, because I've had those. I really have had lots of those where I'm like, wow, maybe I shouldn't have done it at all. And sometimes, you know, you can just skip things. But sometimes, even if this is a little wiggly and I'm not doing it like perfectly even all the way around, I still think it'll look better than not having it because it'll it'll make like the collar like really sandwiched down. It'll make the zipper look really um, put together, you know? Okay. We survived, kind of. Get rid of these pins. Let's see how it looks. Okay, no major tuck things happening. Let's see, it already feels a little bit more firm. Like down here, um, I would consider doing it down here too because can you see how, see that ridge right here? Because of the quilted fabric, it's pushing my lining out. This is what I was talking about along my side seam right here. Here, you can see, here's the ridge of my quilted fabric on the outside. It's just things to think about. So one thing that I could have done, like I said, before I put my sleeve on, was when I did my side seam, open up the seam and stitch down on both sides or even just push it to the back and stitch it down um, and just do bo that on both sides. It would, it would have looked fine having the stitching showing on this side. It would have kind of gone along with the, the front, right? Um, and, and then it would make your lining be more flush with the jacket, and, which gives you a little bit more space for sizing. But I think it turned out really cute. There's, there's my little, I'm gonna take out this basting stitch that's right there. Oh, right, Dan, yeah, exactly. That would have been good, except that, uh, yeah, everything shows on that, huh? <laughs> My scissors there. Well, that was quite a project. I thought this one would be faster than the Coseches that I'm gonna be sewing later in the month. But now that I've seen the Cosecha pattern, I think that one will actually be no problem to sew. Move it over here like this so you can see more. There we go. Yay. It's pretty cute. I feel like this, this um, olive green kind of goes with an era of a bomber jacket and that just now occurred to me. <laughs> ha, nice. Yeah, thanks Raquel, I know, huh? That wasn't too hard to do, honestly. I matched on the side seams and it doesn't even look like it. Oh, there's my gathering thread. I'll pull that out too from my sleeve when I set my sleeve. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and persevering with me. We got so much done today. I think that we learned a lot. I mean, when you're only gonna sew one, you're really putting a lot of pressure on that one garment to turn out exactly how you want it. So hopefully some of the things that I discovered during this will help you. And if you're in the guild, I'll probably post an update on the sizing thing. Nice, Curtis, I'm glad. Good luck on your shirt. Yeah, and there's a menswear playlist if you're interested. Hopefully I've been good about putting everything in there. I'm pretty good about doing it. But sometimes I see things in funny playlists, so. Just search. Oh, and on my website, which is so so.live, 
you can search on the search bar. It's the best way to find all the videos in a series. And I, it's not, there's no ploy to get you to my website. I don't even have a newsletter anymore. I got rid of it. No pop-up, nothing. <laughs> you just go there and if you're looking for part two or part one or the cutting or finished photos, people give me a hard time for not posting finished photos and I'm like, I post them on Instagram and they're on my website. Yes, please do. We'd love to see it. That's awesome. Cool. All right, have a good weekend, you guys. Oh, thanks, Kylie. That's nice of you. <laughs> well, this is a kind of an ambitious project. I didn't realize it was gonna be. I'm glad this is finally off of my to-do list because I've wanted this for over a year. And I've wanted to use this fabric too, so cool. Have a great weekend, you guys. Oh, thanks, Mary, it's nice of you. Um, and happy sewing. A couple weeks from now, I'm making the Cosecha plant pants, not plants, by So Liberated. They're, they're very cool. Um, and if you're in the guild, I'll see you for workshops and skill building session next Friday on grading and um, other fun stuff. So see ya, bye.